So um, as we get started this afternoon, I would want to um, get you involved a little bit um, before I, I get into what I want to discuss. So let's start with a bit of, um, let me see how much you know about Poland, okay? So um, who has been to Poland? Wow! That's a surprise. <laughs> I didn't expect that much really, you know, but anyway, it's all good. So let's start with this. What comes to your mind when you hear the word Poland or when you think about Poland? Now, don't tell me Ukrainian refugees yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, yeah, let's go. Migration. Okay, migration. <laughs> fragmented histories. Fragment, fragmented histories, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. War. War, okay. And I think it was migration, that was it, yeah. Okay, excellent, thank you for that, <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you for that. Yes. Don't worry, I'm gonna help you with that. No, nah, don't worry. I'll you need to, uh, when Homeland you say something. Homeland yeah. and family. Homeland. Homeland and family, great. Okay. okay, the translators can only understand what is spoken into a microphone, so. Okay, all right, so that's why we need to it. needs to be okay. in the microphone. All right, yes, what else? Okay, so we need the microphone then. You just hold in a second. I'm not sure I can say the name correctly because it's been 30 years, but Václav Havel? Uh, the okay, I'm not sure And, if and I the got entire that. shipbuilding movement and the Umbruch and okay. in 89, okay. I, I associate a lot of uh -huh. the, the turnover uh -huh. in Eastern Europe with, okay. with Great. Poland. I don't know. Great, great. Now. Okay, what else? Anybody else? Okay, so we got one more. Albert, you got, okay. <laughs> Okay, I think we got one here. Okay, yeah, right there. Yeah, Catholicism and a very problematic role of the abortion policies. Yes, we're coming to that. <laughs> we're coming to that. Okay, one more at the back. Yeah, all right. I know, sorry, just a big jazz festival in Krakow. Can you repeat that? Something about Krakow? Just a big fest, jazz festival in Krakow. Okay. I know. Okay, all right, great. Great. Okay, let's take the last one. Okay, two more, two more. Ooh. Can I redeem myself? Because I meant Lekvalesa. Again? I said the wrong name. Ah, I the meant wrong Lekvalesa. Name. Okay, Lekvalensa. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lekvalensa, you remember that? <laughs> okay. All right. Chopin. Chopin. Yeah. Brilliant. Frederick Chopin. Yeah. Okay, the last one. We'll take the last one right here. All right. Hello, it's me again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One more thing okay. that's important, I think not mentioned, Haiti and the Caribbean. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank you for that. So a round of applause for yourselves, right? Come on. <laughs> okay. That was just a bit of test to see um, how well you know Poland and what you do know about um, Poland. So, um, a bit about myself, I've spent, so I'm from Nigeria originally, and um, I've spent 16 to 17 years in, in Poland. Um, but what I will say to start with is, um, you know, today I sat down listening to, you know, the, the guys talking about um, Austria, Switzerland, um, you know, a few other countries, you England, and I'm like, Poland is sort of, still closed. Yeah, because Poland is very homogeneous. And I'm gonna ask you again, if you've been to Poland, were you lucky to see a black person on the street? Be honest, how many did you see? I'm sure you can count. <laughs> okay, two. Oh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> All right, okay. I like that, good, good, okay, yep. Wrocław, good. Good. 10, just 10. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay, yeah, somebody there. Yeah. Yeah, microphone, sorry. Yeah. Yes, went to a place to, at the coast, okay. Ostsee, yeah, and so didn't see no black person. Yeah. 
and then we went visiting somewhere and we said one or two yeah, black right. people, but okay. they weren't really watching us. Okay. Of. Secret. <laughs> I can imagine. All right. Welcome to my world. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. One more. But uh, I know that uh, there is, uh, on the political arena, yep. there is one black guy who's basically biracial. I can't remember his name because uh -huh. that's a Polish name. Okay. And he also made some very controversial comments when the Joe Floyd uh, issue thing came up. He came right. up. Uh -huh, uh -huh, but uh -huh. he's very, basically I see him as Polish because there's, beside his skin color, uh -huh, he's basically uh -huh. the okay. product of his, of his own environment. Right. I can't remember right. his name. I'm sure you know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who that is. <laughs> yeah, and he was involved with the uh, with the uh, with the green with the uh, uh, green political party, basically. Okay, okay, I think I know. Who and, you're and, he's, about. and he's queer as well. So. Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember the name now, but yeah. All right. Okay, great. So let's move on. Just a bit of background. So Poland has a um, population of 38 million. Okay, so sizable, 38 million. Um, it's got about 175,000 refugees. Now listen to this. It's, it's got about 5,400 Africans in total. 5,400. I don't know if that's big or small. Huh? I mean, rather small, right? Okay, so 5,400, all right? Now, um, let's deal with the first discussion. How did people of African descent live on the continent that reacted largely ne negatively to their presence? So Poland now as a case study, okay? Can I have my first um, slide or first picture? I wanna talk about Agbola Brown. So just, you know, a few, few um, decades back before the second war, there was a Nigerian called Mr. Agbola Brown who, you know, migrated to the UK. Well, the story said he jumped on a ship from Lagos, Nigeria, and he landed in England, all right, in 1920 um, thereabout. And two years later, he ended up in Poland in 1922, okay? So in sort of modern history, um, that's the name that comes to mind when we talk about the first black person or the first group of black people that settled in Poland, Mr. Agwala Brown. Now, what is interesting about him was that um, he's a musician. He worked in, in the clubs in, in Warsaw. He was a jazz player, a very, very good one at that. Now, where the history gets captivating um, is where, when the war broke out, Mr. Agwala Brown, an African, a Nigerian, joined the Polish army and fought the war. So a courageous African man fought for Poland, defended Poland with his blood. Okay, he didn't run away. Okay, now, um, at that time, my assumption was that um, Africans, there were not so many Africans who lived in Poland before the war, from what I know, but the few ones that were there seems to be accepted. They were accepted, you know. At that point also, we could say that, you know, I mean, the, the, the Poland hadn't been, well, you know, Poles would tell you they were victims of war, like she rightly said, you know. Um, so at that point, let's say Poland accepted foreigners, accepted black people, there were Jews, and you know, all the history um, you know about. Now, <clears throat> Let's move forward to, you know, after the, the Second War. The African community in Poland, the way I look at it, has not been strong. It has not been, um, I would say, consolidated. It has not been um, together for several reasons, okay? And what I've noticed is that we usually come together each time there is a crisis. And like someone said to me this morning that, Sometimes crises are like catalysts, you know, it pushes us, it makes us to do things that normally we would not do. So looking back, um, I realized that we have not really had, because like I said, there are a few of us, not so many, 5,400 Africans, okay? We can do a lot, but we somehow we're divided. And I think that's also because uh, Poland never colonized any African country. 
unlike in France where you can have Senegalese, you can have, I mean, these are guys who already speak French. So it's easy for them to adapt. It's easy for them to form communities, to have groups and, you know, work together. But we never had that, right? So you have group of West Africans, you have group of, you know, Francophones and, and all of that. So we're kind of just scattered, all right? But here's the game, here's the thing. Each time there is a crisis, we all come together. <laughs> so sometimes crisis seems to be that catalyst that brings us together. The first one we had was in 2009. So before then, as far as I know, there wasn't really, really any strong black movement that I know of in 16 years of living in Poland. There hasn't been. But in 2009, when um, a Nigerian was killed, um, Maxwell Itoya was killed by a police officer. Um, there was some altercation and, you know, um, well, they said it was an accidental discharge. So the, the police did not intend to kill him. But anyway, Maxwell died. Um, he was a father of three girls, you know, had a bright future, but he died. And that was the first ever time I would see Africans come together in solidarity. You know, there were protests at the parliament. There were, you know, a whole lot of human rights um, organizations also got involved. And for the first time, um, we were visible because all the while we were not visible, okay? But that incident actually brought us together. A lot of Africans came together, you know, irrespective of, of, of our background and, and all of that. So that was the first incident. Um, the second one was recently when uh, George Floyd was killed. There was a lot of global, you know, international uh, movements and that also, you know, spread to, to Poland as well. So we, you know, we have, um, um, we, we also had some, some protests in, in, in Warsaw. And also we have um, this um, group of young, I would say, mixed, mixed um, generations. So these are Africans or these are kids with African father and Polish mother. So they are now the face of the African community because they have a stronger voice. They are younger. They feel they are from, because they were born there. So I wasn't born in Poland, even though I have a Polish nationality, right? But they are born in Poland, so they can actually, you know, stick their chest out and say, hey, I'm from here as well, <laughs> you know, I know my rights and I'm going to stand for my right and all of that. So they came together and they formed a group called Black is Polish. Okay, you might want to hashtag that. <laughs> Black is Polish. So that has been a movement. It's been around for the last two years and it's, it's gaining momentum and we really, you know, we're, we're coming together now to support that movement. So um, global crises, global events are bringing us together, to say the least. Now, the last one, a couple of months ago, was a Ukrainian war that displaced a lot of African students. That also brought us together because it wasn't just Nigerians that were displaced, Cameroonians, Malians, you know, um, Gab uh, you know Gambians, Africans from everywhere were displaced. So at some point we, we started, you know, individually. So Nigerians were picking up Nigerians at the border, Ghanaians were picking up Ghanaians at the border. But at some point we realized that it's not gonna work that way. So we, we had to come together and, you know, have a coordinated effort to um, help the Africans crossing the border to settle. So um, just to, to move a little bit faster, uh, when did self-organization begin in the respective communities and what form did it take? So I think um, from my experience and from what I know, um, we, like I said earlier, we haven't had a very strong self-organization up until recently, okay? Now that should have been, but for one reason or the other, um, most of the people that came in the, in the okay, so right after 1922, when Agwola Brown, you know, um, lived in Poland, fought the war, and then after the war, he left. 
there, there, there wasn't so much of, you know, black stories or black, you know, um, thing going on around, apart from students that came from Africa to study. So in the 60s and the 70s, and actually most of them just studied, got a degree and went back. Okay, because, you know, at that time, a lot of places in Africa was much, in quote, better because, you know, Poland then had communism. So it was like from war to communism and things were really difficult. So most of the African students would tell you that, in fact, I had, um, we're doing a, a documentary right now, uh, featuring Nigerians that have lived in Poland since 1920. And there is a, there is a, a guy who he's lived in Poland for 45 years. And he said to me, when I arrived Warsaw, the airport was a cornfield. The airport in Nigeria at that time was already an international airport. So he arrived to Poland to a, a, a cornfield, literally. I mean, a small airport, you know, just telling you how much of, um, you know, development and progress that was in Africa at that time. Of course, now the reverse is the case, right? Okay, so, um, so we, 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 we didn't have um, a really strong self-organization as far as I know. Most of them were, were students. They just came in, they studied and left. Uh, but then when Poland joined European Union in 2004, 2005, you know, they joined Schengen as well things opened up, okay? So there was an influx of, you know, um, students. So there were more and more and more uh, students coming in. And then um, one particular organization that I would like to mention and um, also talk about is the Somalian Foundation. And I think um, um, that, that, that is the only, I would say, center point for Africans living in Poland. So Somalian Foundation was organized in 2007. It was established in 2007. And their goal is to be the bridge between immigrants, especially African immigrants and Polish society. And they are doing that very, very well. It was, it was founded by a Somalian historian. Now he's late. Um, he was killed in a terrorist attack in Somalia. Um, but they were, they were able to, to organize the African community. Um, they were able to lobby. And, um, you know, at some point, I think one of four, five, six years ago, they got a lot of support and recognition from the European Union. Um, and of course, yeah, African communities need funding to be able to do, you know, stuff. So Somalian Foundation has been very, um, they've been doing very well, and they've been a center point for Africans um, in Poland, they provide um, um, free legal service, you know, when it comes to immigration issues and, and all of that. They provide free language course because that's also a big challenge. You know, like I said, a lot of Africans in Poland, I would even say 65 to 70 percent are students. All right. So there is no um, economic capacity as well, you know, to be able to come together as a community and do and do really um, serious stuff. So Somalian Foundation has been a center point. Now, moving quickly to, how much time do I have? Five minutes, okay, I'm just gonna rush now. So um, the other discussion here is along what interests, okay, did black people organize themselves and what brought them together? So this is very obvious. Like I said, it's education, you know, mostly. And then all, we, we've got music and arts. We do have a number of, you know, young African talented musicians and artists. And that also is something that brings, brings, um, brings, them, brings us together. And also sports. We do have some people who came just, you know, to, to do sports. They came as footballers and, and all of that. And then of course, religion. <laughs> That's something that would always bring, you know, Africans um, together. So most of the time, um, black people in Poland um, use these things as a point of connection, sports, religion, music, and um, education. All right. Now, what role did the model of the African-American civil rights um, and the black power movement in the United States, what role did it play? Or is it playing in Poland? Like I said earlier on, two years ago, when we had the Judge Floyd case, I mean, there was a lot of awareness. There was a lot of consciousness that, you know, that gave to us. It gave us some sort of, you know, audacity, 
you know, and um, so that birth a whole lot of, you know, uh, new organizations. Like I said, the, the Black is Polish is one. Um, so that was a catalyst that, that gave us a lot of impetus to do, to do more organization. Um, and then how important are the connections to the African continent? Now, this is something that really, um, I'll just want to very quickly talk about. Yeah, I think um, the way I look at it, um, um, gradually the diaspora, the African diaspora is, is in my opinion, is getting some, some, somehow disconnected from Africa you know, itself. And why, why am I saying that? So I'm Nigerian. Um, I've lived in Poland for 16 years. Um, as a Nigerian living in Poland, I cannot vote during elections in Nigeria. And it's so sad that I'm not able because there is no diaspora voting, which, you know, um, I don't know how many African countries do you have that. Not so many, which in a way it is disconnecting us from being able to contribute. I mean, they want to take our money, right? You know, diasporas, we send money home, right? But they don't want us to vote. So sometimes I, I blame the, you know, the, the governments in Africa, the leadership in Africa, that, you know, um, they are also not helping us to think back, you know, to, to think about coming back home. They're also not helping us to think about, you know, sort of investing or taking back, deploying knowledge back home and, and all of that. So um, um, I think this is, this, is, this, is, this is important. So we must reestablish that connection. The African diaspora has to be reconnected well to Africa. I think there is a good relationship that, you know, um, that can develop uh, from there. There are a couple of Africans in Poland that are doing quite well. We've got two Africans in the parliament. We used to have two of them. Uh, one is a very close friend, very, very close friend, Abraham Godson. Now he relocated, he moved back to Nigeria after his you know, tenure in the, in the parliament. And we do have uh, Kilian Muyina, who is still in the Polish uh, parliament. We have some prominent sports you know, African guys, we've got some entertainers and, and all of that. So, um, but again, like I said, we're not consolidating this capacity, this strength. We're scattered and we've not been able to really come together and work together. I think that's a challenge we have to, to discuss and look at, all right? Um, I'll take just one or two more points. So talking about social issues and, so, and, and class status, yes, like I said, we do have one or two Africans that are in politics, very good social status, and that is actually inspiring the next generation of Africans to say, well, if this guy can do it, then I can also do it. If he's involved, then I can also be involved. So now we do have some younger Africans that are, you know, really being inspired by the success stories of those with good uh, social status in terms of politics. And then uh, talking about what role did business startups and the so-called ethnic economy play? So when I look at this, this discussion or this question, what comes to my mind is the Asian community. I don't know how it looks like in, in, in Germany, but in Poland, those guys are massive. They, they own literally almost a whole town called Chinatown. I'm sure you're going to have something like that around here as well. You know, they've been able to build economic capacity. All right. We have not been able to do that as, as Africans. And I think that's a challenge. There are a few Africans that are running businesses and we need more of that. You know, the entrepreneurship um, 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 uh, potential and tendencies. It helps when you're an African, you own a company and you, 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 you employ Poles, you bring some measure of, you know, some sort of respect, some sort of, you know, um, a perspective, you know, because sometimes um, I've had to interact with a lot of Polish people and when they, when they look at us Africans, especially Africans in Poland, so they look at you as um, hopeless, they look at you as helpless, because that's the, perception they have. Like I said, um, Poland has been closed for many years. So you would meet a lot of, a lot of Poles who would just look at you and look at you and look at you like, where in the world are you from? <laughs> you know, I mean, I've had, I have had people ask me, so are you 
are you an African American? Because they just can't relate that there are people from Africa, like Africa, you know? They're like, are you an African American? Like, if you're black, then you're likely to be from, <laughs> from you know, um, America. So, um, so we need to really improve as, as, as an African community. We need to really work on economic emancipation. I mean, that's going to help a lot to build a stronger community because, like I keep saying, we do not have that um, in Poland. And then lastly, I'm just going to talk about the three categories of um, the black Polish or the African Polish we discussed. So there are three categories. Um, there are... There, are, there is the generation that were born, like I said, they have African father, Polish mother. So they prefer, um, so they, 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 well, they call themselves mulatto. I don't know if you're familiar with that word. So mulatto. So we don't have, well, I mean, we don't have the word African Polish or black Polish. They're called mulatto because they are mixed, okay? And, and they, you know, I don't think they have a problem with that, right? Um, and then we have those that are born in Poland by African Africans. So I'm Nigerian. My wife is Nigerian. My oldest daughter, she's 11. She feels more European than Nigerian because she was born there. So she, you know, she, she, she's, she's literally Polish. She's just black, right? <laughs> so, um, so we have that second category. And then we have the third category, which is just migrants, just students who are migrants. So the first two categories, they, are, they have stronger voices. They have adapted because language is not a barrier. Culture is not a barrier. So they are able to really, um, you know, they are able to really um, governize and, um, and, and, and um, you know, really um, drive towards a, a stronger, a stronger uh, community. So in summary, um, the big challenge that I see going forward is also the political um, challenge. So we've got a government now which is very, very conservative, very, very right-wing, even though Catholics, all right, so literally they preach the Bible, but they don't do what it says, <laughs> you know. So they will take, they will take um, Ukrainian refugees, but they will not take Muslim refugees, okay. So they will take, according to them, they will take Christian, Afri Christian African refugees, but they will not take Muslim African refugees. So you see the mentality. So we've got this political challenge ahead of us, you know. Um, many years ago, before the current government was elected, we had an office where you can literally write a petition if you were racially profiled or racially, you know, abused. But since they came into power, they scrapped that office, so there is, we do not have that department anymore. So if you have a, you know, a racist issue now, the best you can do is just walk into a police station and give a statement, which of course you know that will never see the light of the day. It doesn't work. Yeah, so at the end of the day, the bigger challenge I see is the political system, which is not very, I would say, um, open, which is not very... Um, um, willing to even allow our communities to grow. Well, you know, partly we might say, yes, they've had histories of being victims of, you know, being occupied. So they also have this fear of foreigners, you know, taking over and, and all of that. So um, I think that's, that's where I see it from my perspective. Thank you.